what's happening? <laughs> it's six o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? I'm making pancakes. I don't That's know. six o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's been a long time since I've made pancakes. So. And it's not even Pancake Tuesday. No, it's not. It's not even Tuesday. But is the true reason for this the fact that we're running out of cornflakes? Yes. Don't know if I can get to lie in bed while breakfast turns up, but... Every now and then. Exciting times! I'd say it's for a special occasion, but there ain't any. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not very well presented. <laughs> that is definitely not well presented. What is that? <laughs> that is not well presented. That is just your lemon. Oh lordy. I know, there you go. Well, to be fair, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to. Well, I just hope it's edible, all right. Mm. Not too bad at all. That's all right, then. Mm. Mm. Well, it might be early, but um, I've uh, cooked breakfast, and uh, now, you have to look at, I don't know if you can hear it, Beverly uh, thumping up and down upstairs. But yeah, she's uh, just resetting the line, so uh, yeah, it's an early start here on Salty Lass. Well, we've um, returned to um, the only publicly available mooring in Menai. We're going to leave the coordinates um, in the just down below, so that if you are here, you at least know where the public mooring is. Uh, but it's just by Menai Bridge and um, it's got some writing on it which has got nothing to do with telling you that it's public but talk to the harbour master and he can sort you out. We um, stayed here at Menai just so that we can do the funeral so that's all done. I've still got a pile left to do but it's a lot smaller now so we are going to carry on to Liverpool so that we can get those things done. Well, one of the things I can tell you about this mooring is that um, when the uh, tide is running, it is doing an absolute humdinger. Um, you know, like uh, we're, we're here at Springs, so it was easily doing four knots, maybe just a touch more. Um, there's um, a stick just behind me, and uh, when it's low tide, you can see the whole island. Um, there's also a space that you can um, lean your boat against but I have to say I think Beverly and I are a little bit too chicken for that one <laughs> but um, apparently you can lean your um, boat against it and then just wait for low tide to clean your boat which I have to tell you we seriously need doing um, the nice thing about being here is that we did meet some subscribers and um, you know, it's um, got lots and lots of activities with jet skis, ribs and all sorts. So sometimes you do get a little bit of wake. Well, I'm a little bit sad. I'm going to take down our chart. Well, it's not really a chart. Could be a chart, I suppose, because we're worried about uh, waters and stuff. But our island trip, as you know, is uh, not going to happen this year. So I might as well take this off the bulkhead. Oh, I know it's a bit sad, but oh. well, we made it over Carnarvon Bar quite nicely. We did make it over Carnarvon Bar quite nicely, and um, we're going to be uh, moving on down the swellies. I'd like to get to Liverpool, but we'll never know with us. You just don't.
good morning viewers from uh, North Wales. Well, we're from North Wales. <laughs> oh, you're good from Cheshire. I know, but it's just that we're in North Wales. But good morning viewers. <laughs> I was just wondering whether... There's nothing good uh, about it, it's 5am. Exactly. Whether you're a morning person or a night owl. Um, I'm definitely a morning person. Uh, I mean, so it's five. I'm bright, I'm breezy, I'm bustled, Beverly, for all she's worth. Whereas, oh, yeah. what kind of person are you, Bev? Definitely not a first thing in the morning person. Um, yeah, she actually does her best work after about six o'clock. Um, Most people do, it's called daytime. <laughs> No, I mean in the evening. <laughs> but no, I like to get up, get going, and uh, but I'd like to know what our viewers are, whether they're morning people or night owls like our bev. Anyway, um, we've uh, just left the mooring at um, Menai. Uh, Menai. Uh, we've got some foul tide against us at the moment. Um, but we're coming up to slack and we will have a little bit of uh, tide in our favour uh, a bit later but yeah we're uh, hopefully this time going to get all the way over to Liverpool because it seals like because um, we had to leave the boat in Menai for two weeks while we did stuff it just feels like a, a long journey doesn't it Bev? It does yes but um Hopefully today we won't have a uh, four six in our face like we did last time. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, yeah, so we're hoping that this time it will not be an aborted trip. swellies at the moment um, but we're uh, <laughs> more like the bouncies <laughs> but um, yeah we're still in Menai um, straight just the top Menai of it straight, so we're getting a lot of swell coming in aren't we we certainly are but um, I was just talking to Beverly about uh, tides and spring tide and neat tides and all that sort of stuff and uh, I said to Bev uh, I looked at the moon and I said I can tell you now by just looking at that moon that we're at a neat tide. We have done a blog on it, but um, you know, as a first approximation, look at the moon. If it's a quarter moon like we have at the moment, then you're on neaps. But if it's a full moon or a new moon, you're very close to springs. Yeah. Um, the full, the proper time is just always a little bit after. So you get a new moon. And then a day or two later you get springs. And a day or two later you get springs. Well, at the minute we're getting a lot of swell coming in, which I think is from yesterday's blow. Yeah. Um, but um, we started the journey with foul tide uh, and um, we've got uh, the tide going with us at the moment, which is why our speed is... 5.1. 5.1. But we started at about... 2.2 2 .2. 2 .2 knots so, so even with this swell we're still doing 5 knots yeah so it just shows you just how much um, the tide with you or against you can and affect probably, your speed probably the points you go through puff and side yeah but that's what I'm going to be doing now so um, we'll see you on the other side Interesting, just at the top of um, the Menai Straits. It won't come out on camera. I know that for a certainty. 
never does. It never does, but it was um, a bit frisky as the two tides met. The tide coming out of Menai Straits and um, the tide that we are in now. But it does mean that now we are in foul tide again. Um, so our, wind, our speed will be decreasing. I'm sure it doesn't tell you now yet. It's currently three and a half knots. So it's yeah. about a knot and a half. Yeah. Um, but while the, where the tides met, as the, the tide coming out the straits met the other tide, um, you know, the water just piled up and it was um, a bit frisky and Beverly uh, took the autopilot off because um, we always prefer to uh, hand steer the frisky bits. But the autopilot's now in control and we're going to let it go on with it. Slow day. Um, the wind is wind is down to three knots, which is no use to anyone. It was supposed to be sailable today. <laughs> when are you going to stop believing the weather forecast? The problem is um, the day before. Obviously never. Never. But the thing is, the day before, you know, the weather looked like it was going to be really, really bad, and it was going to be too blowy. But. I probably reckon that we could have probably done it. Probably, but I'll be honest, I think it was quite blue because this morning like, we've had some pretty horrible swells. We have they've had come, some... They've come from somewhere. They have, they have. But, um, but no, um, but the thing is you have to make the decision the day before and it just looked too nasty. Uh, whereas yesterday we made the decision it looked like it was going to be saleable. Uh, but you mean yesterday we made the decision that today looks saleable? Today looks saleable. Yeah, in reality, there's no sailing. Well, there's sailing in terms of making a passage. There's no sail with the flappy things. True. Okay, fair enough. We're a motorboat, but we're not just doing the ram the throttle full forward, full forward kind of things that motorboats do. The problem with going to Liverpool is. You're pretty much committed all the way because um, there's really nowhere left to go once you pass um, Land Inno. Mm. Um, so the upshot of this is that um, you're looking at your ground speed and the rest of you think, I'm never going to make it, it's not going to work. But what you've got to realise is it takes so long to get to Liverpool that the foul tide that you're working against will, in about another two hours, become a positive tide and you'll make up this really slow pace in that section. And because you're doing a 12 hour passage, you have to do your foul tide first. Yeah, but Gaylor's having all sorts of collie wobbles about it because doing three knots, you're going to get there at like high water at the top, which is no good. You want to be there at high water minus three. But when you add in that even at this speed, we will make it there at high water minus one and we're still punching a foul tide. Yeah. I'm just saying, you've got to believe your calculations. Our speed will increase as the foul tide drops, then we'll pick up the proper tide and our speed will block. So if we're going to make it at high water minus one with a foul tide, we'll surely make it better than high water minus one with a good tide. Well, I should, we should do. So it's just the fact that, you know, should is like... Um... Trust, the, trust the calculations, Luke. <laughs> Go with your feelings. <laughs> well, my feelings are... I'm... I, I, I'm not going to make it. I know I am going to make it, but that's one side of how my brain is working. And the other side is like, ah, ah, what's my alternatives? Can I do an anchoring in the Mersey? Can I? Yes, you can. And the answer is yes, we can anchor in the Mersey. But... There is a patch of the Mersey with a lot of sand. You could anchor in that. Uh, there used to be mooring balls from the club up there. They've all gone now, but um, a little bit further south where it's clear. I have an anchor there at about three metres. On a three meter chart. Yeah, and luckily it is coming up to knees. So the uh, tide so the is a small one, it's only eight meters. <laughs> <laughs> Through 
farms at the moment and not a single blade is turning. We need about 10 knots of wind for our sailboat and we're not doing anything either. So I don't know what knots of wind, uh, wind turbines need but they're doing nothing. So it's a very, very dull passage on Salty Lass. On the good news though, the foul side is uh, starting to dissipate. Aye. And lunch is being made. And lunch is being made. <laughs> She's actually struggling with this one. I spy with my little eye something beginning with W. I've said water. And I've said no. And I've said whales. And I've said no. Can you, the viewer, see the other item with W in the picture? Entries on a postcard, please. Are you for real? Of course. 